that for years and they beat it up with somebody else. You know what are they doing? Right now? Okay, no. I think you better say it. Traffic's very light today, by the way. Feels good to me. One, two, three. You know what it's for? Vacay. <laughs> it's there for vacay. <laughs> you have to be on the other side of it. Yeah, I guess you would. Oh, because we're vacay. not far enough from home to be on vacay yet. <laughs> Get to vacate on the other side of the house. Yep, that's true. That it's good to stand up, doesn't it? Forever. There they come. There's uh, sleepers on this car if you get tired. <laughs> you say they were nice and made up. Yeah, they were on that bus. <laughs> no, I had it in my hand. So another conductor we have on board is Mr. Bo Ellis. He is manning the uh, commissary, our store. We have snacks and souvenirs there. We'll tell you a little bit about it. It is in the back of car number three. In the back of our car number four, our first class car, the Dome Observation Car, we have Mr. Andrew Walker assisting as uh, host and porter back there. The head uh, locomotive, our engineer today, is Mr. Ryan Miller. Ryan is one of our engineers out of Chattanooga. Comes up here on a fairly regular basis. Uh, well qualified. He, he's been a qualified engineer since he was in high school. I keep telling him I got socks over him, but he don't listen. <laughs> but anyhow, in our heading conductor today, 
is Mr. Nick Coleman, also out of our Chattanooga history. So on behalf of everybody at the Tennessee Valley Railroad Museum, welcome aboard. We're glad to have you today. Now we've got a few rules to go over briefly. Rule number one is there's no running aboard the train. So kids, please keep your parents or your grandparents, whoever you're with, from running up and down the train. I know how Papa likes to run in the snack bar, but don't let him do it. <laughs> don't let him. All right, rule number two is there's no smoking aboard the train. We used to allow smoking in the vestibule areas between the cars, but a while back in the middle of the forest, Smokey Bear got on the train, looked at us very sternly and said, no smoking in my Cherokee National Forest. So we're gonna abide by Mr. Smokey Bear's rules and no smoking aboard the train. Also, please keep you off and let you float gently down the Hiawassee River. I also want our riders some cabins. If you're sitting on the right as we cross this road crossing, you look down that road and see a white grocery store, white general store, that is Webb Brothers Grocery with the Texaco sign out in front of it. But coming up on the left is one of our more historical buildings. It's the old bridge tender's house. Coming up on the left of this intersection is a uh, tan house with a rock foundation. That was built by the railroad for the gentleman called the bridge tender or the watchman. He had the most important job in the railroad in this area because anytime a steam locomotive passed over the old original wooden bridge it was his job to get two buckets of water walk across the bridge and douse any hot coals or embers that had fallen out of the uh, steam locomotive's firebox or ash pan coming up on the right right adjacent to us is a future rafting facility they are still in the process of uh, getting constructions and permits they should be operating by this end, end of this summer. But back on the left is the old bridge tender's house. It's right up against the tracks. He would literally walk out that back door, grab his two buckets of water, walk across the bridge and put out any small coals or fires that the steam locomotives may have started. Bridge tender's house. The bridge tender's job was uh, kind of ruled obsolete. Because in the late 1940s, they built a steel bridge with concrete footings across Sorry. the old wooden bridge was replaced. Yeah. And about the same time as when they swapped from running steam locomotives and started running diesels. Diesels didn't leave the hot embers of coal uh -huh. like the old steamers did. Also, a in uh, Polk County, Tennessee, not only was it a schoolhouse right on Sundays, right it was the Union Church. Yeah. And when they met, it was also the local uh, headquarters for the local Masonic Lodge. As we cross the river on the right is a public boat ramp. You can get somebody to pick you up, to drop you off and pick you up, you can use that boat ramp. Or on the left is our friends at the Hiawassee Outfitters. And Mr. Charlie and his group there all summer long, they'll reach. Hiawassee is a good family river. It's not wild like the Okoe. You don't have to have a guide. And they don't name Grant Rapids up here grumpy or killer or anything like that. So that's a good family oriented river. You come up here and ride that. But if you do float that river, let me warn you, before you think about just diving in that water and cooling off, that water is cold. <laughs> it did, generally does very quickly. Now our friends in the Hiawassee Outfitters also have campgrounds. You're looking at the campground there on the left, and they have some cabins you can rent. Or if you want to rent the Breach Center's house, there's the car number two. If you're interested in that, you can take one of the flyers with you. Now this area up to the powerhouse, but past the powerhouse is going to be where we may see some of our bald eagles. They kind of get a little shy in summertime and go farther into the 
National Forest. Do keep an eye out, you may see of the Hiawassee River all the way up, almost all the way to Appalachia. View across the Hiawassee Gorge. They say the fishing is excellent down there, but they say the snakes are plentiful, so I will never know how the fishing is. Car number four, there's your view. Look left across the Hiawassee Gorge. Now, the reason that area is cleared out is because back in the 1800s, before the railroad was, we'll go completely around the mountain. <laughs> Get ready, brace yourself. <laughs> Be a bump though. I didn't want to fall. Yeah. 